Vacheron is winning. Now, I'm sure you've noticed over the past year, Vacheron has exploded in popularity. That's not just on YouTube, it's also in their authorized dealers, boutiques, everywhere. So if you go to an authorized dealer, not a boutique, and you ask for one of the stainless steel sports models or one of the hype models, for example, the 4500V overseas, you can't get it. I paid a visit to an authorized dealer just to take a look at the 56, and they had it in the leather strap, but they couldn't sell it on the bracelet, which is pretty strange. I think VC knows that the bracelet is the more in-demand version and they've purposely withheld that from the authorized dealers and just kept it to the boutiques. And this is just one of the strategies that Vacheron uses. Also, if you head over to a boutique, what was once a stocked watch, pretty much all the overseas, actually all Vacherons were kind of stocked, just the really expensive special ones, perhaps you needed lead time on that. But nowadays, that's done. You can't get most of the stainless steel or any of the steel hype models, definitely, at the boutiques, at least not immediately, you'll be put on a wait list. Vacheron is much nicer about this. They take care of their customers far better than Rolex. So it, it, there's not that comparison. I'm not trying to draw any complaints towards this. This is just the state of Vacheron today. Now, none of this is news in the watch community. Vacheron is just the latest victim of hype. I'm not complaining. This is just an explanation of why and how VC is winning in today's market. We're going to take a closer look at the 4300V, which is one of their perfect watches, at least I think it's the perfect example of a perpetual calendar done really, really well. So let's have a look at why this particular rose gold perpetual calendar is such a hit for VC. Starting with the dimensions, this watch is technically called the ultra thin perpetual calendar because of its 8.1 millimeter case thickness. It's really thin in the hand. And once you realize it's got a display case back to it with a, with a full size rotor, then it actually feels even thinner. However, I do think the term ultra thin has become less meaningful since the Bulgari Octofenissimo perpetual calendar is 5.8 millimeters thick and the AP perpetual calendar ultra thin is 6.3 millimeters. However, both of those are steel watches or titanium, maybe in the case of Bulgari. It's not gold or a precious metal. So there is that big distinction. And frankly, anything under nine millimeters thick or thin is thin enough. The diameter of the watch is 41.5 millimeters, so it's actually on the larger side and with these integrated lugs, it wears quite large. Surprising for some kind of watch like this, a perpetual calendar, it still bears the, the hallmarks of a sports watch. The solid gold construction on this watch is everything. There isn't a tactile discrepancy between the value of the watch and its in hand feel. With a lot of really expensive watches, they go for really thin and really light. And in person, that actually doesn't make the watch feel that nice. Whereas this, it's, it's gold, so it's naturally heavy, but even the proportions, the thickness of it, the dimensions, all of it points towards something really special. The main reason behind this is, is the bracelet, I think. The construction of the bracelet is actually the best I've seen on any watch. The tolerances are phenomenally small, and I expected to have slightly worse tolerances on gold compared to steel. I made a video on the 4500V, this the steel overseas, and I thought this bracelet would not be as nice as that, but I was wrong. This is a lot better than that. It even has less flex. Additionally, the micro extension system on this is so cool. Just have a look at how it works. Now I've been calling this watch rose gold all along. Uh, those of you that picked up on that know it's pink gold. That's what Vacheron calls it. But really, I mean, I'm I'm not going to be that pedantic. It's rose gold to me. We haven't even gotten to the dial, which is the main masterpiece behind this watch. The depth of the lacquered blue complements rose gold better than any other color. I'm the biggest fan of white gold on watches and would always pick white gold over colored gold. But in this circumstance, I have to concede that this watch looks better in rose gold. Even if you prefer the subtlety of white gold and the following improved versatility, 
This gold can't be beat in terms of sensification. The movement on this watch is fairly good to look at. However, I wish they used a micro rotor instead because then you could actually see more of it. It's weird to have a full-sized rotor on a perpetual calendar or such a high-end watch like this. It just covers way too much. Also, the rotor on this is too similar to the regular overseas. It's perfect in that watch, but I don't think they should have carried it over. This may be the same line of watch, but it isn't close to the same caliber of watch. It would have been easier to appreciate the level of finishing offered on this movement, but Vacheron did recognize this, especially that this bit was lacking, and so on their new skeletonized version of this perpetual calendar, they redid the whole thing. If you take a look at the back of that watch, it's immaculate and far, far superior, in my opinion, to this. I wish that they just transported that stuff and brought it back in this, because the skeletonized dial on that is just, it's just too much. And I think this simplicity with the depth of this lacquer, it's, it's a bit more special. And I wish they gave it the same treatment on the back. So back to why Vacheron is winning. Why are they winning? Because they're playing the game like everybody else after a long time of not having been concerned with the market or hype or all of this stuff. But now everyone is bothered because it's made such a difference to the bottom line of every company. And Vacheron is not an independent brand, so they're not completely non-beholden to anyone. It's part of the Richemont group, so they do have a responsibility to make money, and that's one of their priorities. So playing this careful game of hype, demand, and supply, they're winning. They're winning because if you go to any of the boutiques, you can't just pick up the steel overseas anymore especially with a blue dial, that's very unlikely. The wait lists on those are 18 months, two years. Well, it really depends on who you know and how much they like you. But essentially, Vacheron produces only 20,000 watches in a year. Compare that to any other brand, that's so very low. And in this 20,000, they've got a huge range of different types of watches. Most of them are kind of traditional and kind of old fashioned. Most people don't want those. Most people want the steel sports models and maybe some of the precious metal models and even in the steel sports models some of them are quite thick like the dual time is quite thick the chronographs are really thick they're not that desirable at the moment i think they need to rework that make it a bit thinner kind of play the game a little bit better so in terms of just the overseas line and, and the simple watches the three handers the perpetual calendars the thin ones the precious metal ones yeah it's they're doing what ap did with the 15202 kind of almost to the dot. And they, they're actually achieving the same results. It's interesting to see Vacheron change. They still treat customers a lot better than most brands, but there's demand. There's, there's a lot more demand for them. And that's why they're winning all of these things combined. Now, if you've got more thoughts on this, put in the comments below. Very interested here. If you've got any VC boutique experiences, also let me know. Also a big thanks to a viewer of the channel for letting me come and film this watch for this video and a couple of other watches too. It was a really nice thing for him to do. Now if you want to see more details on the overseas and Vacheron, take a look at my 4500V video. I've got a lot more in that one.